All right, now that we have the amplifier unpackaged from its plastic bag, first order shipping per Derek Haddock from Sundown Audio, an official YouTube channel, and Sundown Audio directly. Bag everything. I don't know how, but science has proven that if you bag an item during shipping, especially car audio, you're automatically 1 million percent guaranteed to have less damage if it were to be dropped, thrown, or... Hello, kitty. This here's Harley. Get the hell out of the way. You're 1 million percent less likely to have a problem in shipping. Let's just put it that way. As you can see, the amplifier has a nice sheen. Excellent, excellent heat dissipation uh, for a heat sink there. Once you use that Allen key included uh, to loosen the uh, two bolts that hold it on right here and here. Has a couple feet that keeps it on up there in the corner. You can lift this top plate off. No information on the back of it. And then you get to your lights. And then you're, you have access to your inputs and outputs uh, beforehand. It's just easier uh, to uh, do the video about it this way. Get a little closer to the amplifier. You have two 40 amp fuses. I have spoken to customer service at Audio Control directly. You do not have to externally fuse this amplifier or any of their other amplifiers that have the built-in built fuse boards. But I'm going to be running a fuse anyways, just in case there's a short circuit. A little extra protection never hurt anyone. Then we get to the power and ground inputs in the remote in and out. They are four gauge, true four gauge. I have not tried it out. I will be later today when I get to my builder's house. I have some GP car audio, one aught to four aught reducers. Uh, gonna see if that is a true proper four gauge. Uh, update will probably be put in the description or the comments. And then we get to the remote in or out. Why would it have a remote out? We'll get to that very briefly. You have your analog. I wish they were Tiffany connectors because of how much this amplifier cost, but they are not. Still gets the job done adequately. Analog um, uh, front and rear inputs for RCA. And then you have your outputs, uh, your line outs. Most decent quality amplifiers or four channels have line output. What makes this amp special is these are assignable. You can uh, tune within the DSP a specific frequency or range of signal and a, um, a signal strength or uh, gain, if you want to call it that. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I believe from 0.2 volts on up to 6 or 8 volts. I can't remember off the top of my head. I apologize for that. But I'm going to be using these because of the built-in DSP going to my base amplifier, which the video, I believe, is already uploaded of that. You have your high-level or speaker-level inputs. You have your front high, usually for like a factory tweeter or a factory three and a half or four inch and uh, some like Mercedes, BMWs and such or upper tier Ford's GM's, yada yada. Um, you got your front mids or uh, your standard fronts and then you have your rear speakers. These are speaker level inputs. When you use the speaker level inputs from your factory amplifier or factory radio, it acts as a uh, great turn on. Great turn on uh, is uh, Audio Control's GTO technology. When you turn on your radio, this acts like the 12 volt input would act. Um, uh, usually a 12 volt input would tell the amp to turn on. When you use the high level inputs, the factory radio turns on, thus turning on the amplifier. Why is that significant to this? I'll tell you. Because when you use the high level inputs, the 12 volt input becomes a 12 volt output. Meaning you can run this signal wire with a 12 volt positive over to your base amp. 
or other amplifier in order to turn that on if you have multiple four channels or multi-channel amplifiers. So I'm going to be able to run and tune, aside from gain, my bass amplifier directly off of this four channel here. Here we have the USB. That is for the cable of which you plug in here and then plug into your laptop in order to access and tune the DSP, the Digital Signal Processor. When tuning the Digital Signal Processor, you have two built-in full-time uh, high-speed or low-speed RTAs. So you can see the signal coming into the amplifier via RCA or high level inputs and then you can also see the signal going out of the amplifier to your speakers. That helps a lot because you can see where you are gaining and where you are losing uh, performance in your input and output signals. Also you have a 30 band equalizer. Yes, you can tune 30 bands of frequency off of this amplifier. That helps a lot, especially in SQ, sound quality competitions, or when you really want to uh, have a good sounding SPL or overall demo bass build. Give me just a second, let me catch my breath. Going a little bit further into the DSP, you have four presets on this, meaning you can have one preset or tune up within the DSP where the signal coming in is your signal going out. Your second preset could be your signal coming in. It's always going to be uh, the signal coming in. You can't really change that aside from modifying the bass and the treble coming from your source unit. But if you're going to run an amplifier of this caliber why run anything but flat all the way across the board from your source unit and let this bad boy do all the work for you that way you're not running multiple equalizers thus distorting and causing problems with your signal your third could potentially be uh, like a obviously your input signal and then you can have like a SPL tune-up, something that's going to get really loud, maybe not sound the best, but uh, it could be used as like a demo setup or um, uh, uh, SPL uh, tune-up on it, just so that you can maybe get some little bit better numbers and beat on your equipment a little harder and not be as conservative. Your fourth tune-up could be like a, uh, a daily driver tune-up. Say like you just want something that you can beat on, have fun with, but isn't going to push your equipment to the max for your electrical capacity or uh, the amplifier or subwoofer's capacity because most of the time people are just driving around with their cars like I'm going to do. This is going to be my daily driver. It's not a full-on demo vehicle or SPL setup. Excuse me, I'm not good at making videos yet. Probably never will be. And I'm a little short-winded. I had some severe lung damage when I was in the Army. I get short, short of breath pretty easy. But I am going to take uh, use of all four tune-up capabilities. And then you get to your outputs. Uh, on Well, I skipped the ACR3. This amplifier only uses an ACR3 remote, which I do have. That remote, uh, unfortunately, it's down there at the builder's house right now, which is about two hours from where I live. It has a very tactile knob on it. It's not like the ACR1 or ACR2, um, uh, where it just rotates and it doesn't have like any notches. The ACR3 has very fine uh, notches. That way you can turn it up just little increment by little increment. Also, it acts as a control for this amplifier. You can switch it by pushing in on the knob, holding it. The light on the knob will flash. Um, I'm not sure how it will flash. I don't remember from Car Audio Fabrications uh, channel or the Audio Control Direct channel. But it will flash and it will allow you to uh, go to the next setting using the knob. Uh, rotate right or left. 
in order to uh, go from uh, overall master volume control to a master bass control or from the driver's seat without plugging in to the USB port you can switch tune-ups like from setting 1, setting 2, setting 3, setting 4 you can go directly from a SPL to a SQ, from a SQ to a daily driver or a daily driver uh, straight to, excuse me, short of breath again, uh, straight to just whatever's coming in is what's going out. Which, if you're running an amplifier like this, you'll probably never use that except to uh, show uh, the difference in quality in what this amp is truly capable of. But when we get to Sorry, I keep getting a bunch of notifications from uh, Messenger and Marketplace. I got a lot of stuff for sale on there. When we get to the outputs, I believe they are 12 gauge. I tried to fit uh, some T-Spec 10 gauge in here. I was able to. Took a little bit of effort, but it did fit cleanly. I'm going to be running the down for sound 14 gauge out of this. Uh, two wires per hole. I have tried that it is capable of being done have to be a little careful with it but if you're going to be running at two ohms with four ohm components or four ohm mids highs and tweeters you kind of have to I'm going to be using the front two channels for the tweeters and the rear channels uh, for the uh, eights and the six and a halves it's nowhere near enough power for what uh, speakers I'm running but like I said, this is just to figure out where my car is going to be at with voltage. I do have the D-6.1200 on layaway at my local shop. I was just going to start off with that along with the SCV 7500 from Sundown that is on that same layaway. But I found out after talking to a few alternator companies, there is one alternator company that led me to believe, I will not mention their name for slander purposes, that I uh, have an alternator option 250 amps. Uh, my factory alternator is 100 amps. Nowhere near enough power, you would think, for a 7500 and a 1200 six channel uh, amplifier. So I decided, let's keep mine the 7500 in the six channel but let's get the other base amp and this amp here tone it down a bit to see what I can handle with my battery bank there are videos on my battery bank uploaded and install videos soon to come but just testing it out like I said in order to see where uh, performance is going to be once we get to the uh, top panel there is one switch here it is the GTO signal sense you can either turn it on which is going to tell the amplifier to use the high level inputs. If you turn it off, it is going to tell the amplifier to use the RCA inputs uh, for input signal. You have your lights, you have a power, which is green, protection, which is red, and then communication. Uh, with the uh, laptop, when you plug in, utilizing the USB connection. That will illuminate when it is uh, connected and communicating with your laptop and the software installed. You have your maximize inputs. These are similar to a uh, Steve Mead Designs SMD DD1 or DD1 Plus. You have uh, for your high level inputs or your um, uh, RCA inputs. I'm not exactly sure how it works with the RCA inputs with all three lights. So I'm just going to go off the high level inputs here. Excuse me, running out of breath again. When tuning for uh, your uh, high level inputs uh, on the uh, front highs, if, uh, if you have uh, six channels going in, I'm only going to have four channels going in from a factory amplifier. When you turn your volume up with your equalizer on your factory radio uh, or your aftermarket radio, if it for some reason doesn't have RCA outputs to utilize, this will illuminate once the signal is starting to distort back it down until the light uh, discontinues the illumination and that will be your maximum undistorted input level same with the front mid or regular front as i'm going to be using and then same with your rear and then you have your output lights 
again same style as a smd dd1 or dd1 plus these will illuminate when tuning the uh, amplifier uh, through the dsp you <clears throat> i apologize the camera's kind of bouncy i have a bad back as well and it's kind of difficult to stand over the bed and bend over constantly i'm six foot three to 185 pounds it's a little difficult sometimes to bend over constantly but when you are into the DSP with your amplifier uh, and laptop, these will illuminate when tuning the output signal strength. You have your uh, channels 1 and 2, and then 3 and 4. You can tune the gain separately, just like pretty much any other 4 channel out there. And then you have your overall uh, MILC maximum input level control source clipping. Um, I may have misspoke briefly a minute ago when I said I wasn't sure about uh, the RCAs. This could be used, I think, for the RCAs. Correct me if I'm wrong. I apologize if I am. And once again, I apologize for how unsteady the camera is. But this is the four channel I'm going to be using. Again, going to be running it on two ohms. Total of eight speakers, four super tweeters two eights two six and a halfs hopefully it's going to be enough to keep up with the subwoofers i chose to go with that video should be uploaded tomorrow monday the 21st i believe until then please like comment and subscribe again i apologize for the video being all over the place kind of still not used to it better than some of my other videos though at least have a good day thank you bye bye